Um, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Nada, thank you so much for uh, taking time to come uh, teach us uh, what is really, really important, taxes, because thank that's you. the biggest expense uh, yes. of our lifetime. <laughs> yeah, so Nada, welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciated this invitation. Thank you. Hopefully I can help you and answer some questions and of save you taxes. Of course, we have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the first one is tell us about your background and journey and uh, why did you choose accounting? Uh, my journey begins uh, back in, uh, well, uh, th over 30 years ago when uh, I came to Canada and I was in Montreal and I started taking, uh, well, in Montreal, if you're a mature student, you got to take, you got to go to college and you got to do uh, the two-year program and then decide what you want to do. And I did the program and I was taking different courses afterwards uh, in university. I took, uh, I was forced to take the physics and chemistry because it was obligatory. And then I took uh, I didn't know it's still what I wanted to do. I took our, the architectural design. This is something that I like. And until I took accounting course and tax at one of the uh, international tax firms in uh, Montreal in September 1990 that I fell in love with tax. And I said, oh, my God, this is something I like and this is something that I can do. And this is, you know. Uh, especially because of the teacher. She was uh, not just going by the book and teaching what is in the book, but she was also teaching us all the tricks. And I said, oh yeah, that's the best thing I can do. I can learn taxes and I can save taxes and I can help people. And that's how I started. And then I continued my studies in accounting and then uh, continued again after bachelor. I became a CGA, CPA and uh, I moved to Toronto. I worked for some large firms. I worked for the TD's uh, tax department and to some other private corporations, some Fortune 500 companies like uh, Wholesome and, and uh, Cummins. And then January 2011, I went on my own. And since then, I've been on my own. Now I have my own firm. Perfect, perfect. I, I don't know why they don't teach taxes like in high school. Because they should. No, nobody knows about, we don't even understand. Not and just taxes, taxes, financial planning, money management. This yeah. is something that is totally on uh, younger people and they don't know what credit is. They don't know what is interest and they think they can just get a credit card and spend it without knowing where the money is going to come later on to pay for it. And that's why you have so many people that are, you know, spending more than they are actually earning and they're putting it, uh, everything on uh, credits because they don't understand exactly how the money functions and how the interest functions and sooner or later you run out of income to pay for all the expenses. Yeah, yeah it, it is sad. It is sad. So like, I think that like more than 60% of people have their in debt. They can True. True. And not all of that is good debt. Uh, yeah. It's called bad debt. Right. Bad debt. What I call a good debt is the one that actually generates income for you. So you yeah. buy uh, a property and uh, you rent it out. You do have a debt, but at the same time, somebody else is paying for that debt. Your capital is growing, but the problem is people borrow money to go on vacation. And they spend uh, the money on vacation. And for a year after that, they are trying to pay off that vacation or living expenses they buy uh, finance free for six months and then six months later they got to start paying the interest on that and the purchases they made so that is unfortunately yes a lot of people have bad debt not good debt and uh, during the pandemic mm -hmm. i people are spending so much money on amazon exactly <laughs> amazon and all the online shopping because now they can't go out yeah. So they can't have fun anywhere else. They are just shopping. That's the that's, problem, unfortunately. That's the problem. That's the problem. So what tip can you give us how we can save on taxes? Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, okay, being an accountant, I work a lot with uh, small businesses and uh, real estate investors. Mm -hmm. So I have some tips for both of them. Mm -hmm. 
uh, small businesses especially uh, because I deal with them uh, on daily basis, uh, quarterly basis. We do their accounting and we help them regular basis. So uh, first of all is that people are afraid of corporations. They don't know exactly what corporations are. So when they go into business, they start doing it on their own as a sole proprietorship. Mm -hmm. What they don't realize is that any net income that they have inside that sole proprietorship, inside that business, it is fully taxed. So you make 100, 150K, you have 50K in expenses. So 150 minus 50 is 100,000. You got to pay tax on that whole 100,000. Even though you didn't use it, you didn't spend it, still in the business bank account, you got to pay tax on the whole thing. So to give you an example, I had a client last year during the taxes and when I did their taxes, we saw that uh, on 150,000, they had to pay two partners, 150 net income. They had to pay $26,056 in income taxes. When I suggested to them that each of them, they got to pay that. And if we incorporate it, they were to pay only 18750 they couldn't believe it. The reason is that personal taxes are uh, tax, sorry, personal income is taxed at personal tax rates and corporate income is taxed at a different rate. Mm -hmm. So personal taxes, for example, for 2020, almost $49,000 of income, 48,000 something is taxed at 15% federally. Here in Ontario, you pay 5% provincial. So 49,000 is taxed at 20%. The next 49,000 is taxed at 29.65 or 30%. And it keeps going up until we get to 214,000 and anything over 214 is taxed at 50 and a half percent. So a lot of high income earners, real estate agents, doctors, professionals, on that last dollar that they earn anything over 214, they are paying 50% tax. Now if you... 50, 50 and a half. Oh. So just imagine, now if you incorporate and do the same job in a corporation, the first 500,000, not the first 49,000, the first 500,000 is taxed at only 12 and 12 and a half percent, 12.2 percent here in Ontario. Wow. So just imagine the difference. And the reason is because when you start the sole proprietorship, government doesn't look at you as a serious business. Mm. But, but when you incorporate, they want you to earn money. They want you to have a net income. So they want you to hire employees. They want you to build the economy. And when you hire employees, that's when people come out of unemployment, they start paying payroll taxes, they start paying unemployment, they start paying CPP. So that is what the government is encouraging. That's why the corporate tax is a lot less. So you hire other people. So then you sit on the top, you manage the business and somebody else is doing the job for you. And that's how you can grow faster. So this is one of the biggest mistakes that individuals make that when they start earning, they start going into business for themselves. They don't know. They just think it's easier. Yes, it's easier. It's much cheaper to have a sole proprietorship. You don't need anything here in Ontario. Even if you don't have a registry, you don't change it, you don't put a name on your business, you don't even need to register. Until the federal government doesn't care, CI doesn't care, you don't have a name for your business. As long as you report the income, they don't care. The problem is when you go to a bank and you want to open a business bank account or you want to put up a sign, that's when you got to pay $60 and register that business name. But unfortunately, Tax-wise, when they come in at the end of the year and we are doing their taxes and we see that, oh my God, they made hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars in net income, that's when we realize, oh my God, you need serious help. You need to incorporate. The problem with corporations is that they are expensive. Yeah. To start the corporation, if you need a minute book, if you're partners, you need shareholder agreement. So it costs anywhere from fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars, depending on if an accountant does it, a lawyer does it. And if you have a shareholder agreement or not, so it, it is costly. And then at the end of the year, it's not just tallying the numbers and putting the numbers in a tax return. Now you need to do balance sheet and you need to do income statement. 
we need to account for every line of transaction, it gets expensive, yes. But you got to think of the taxes that you save at the end of the year. And the protection that also the yes. uh, corporation brings you, because when you are a sole proprietorship, you and your business are one. Yes. The government doesn't see you as two separate entities. If somebody sues you, your own home, your own car, your own investment, yeah. everything is at risk. So that is another reason you got to consider to incorporate. So that is the biggest mistake I see people make. Yeah. So if you have like a few properties, mm -hmm. uh, does it worth it to? So that it comes to, so properties and investments mm -hmm. is different. So uh, because federal government wants you to have to invest your capital, but in a business that you hire employees, mm -hmm. they give you that tax break of 500,000 paying only 12 and a half percent tax rate. But when you have properties, uh, Finance Canada and CRA look at it as passive income. Yeah. You are not working for it. So you do not have that advantage of paying 12 and a half percent. So you, if you incorporate, unfortunately, you got to pay 50 and a half percent, that highest tax rate. Passive income in a corporation is taxed at highest tax bracket, 50 and a half percent. Wow. So that is, yes, but, but there are ways that you can get away with it. So you can create a two-tier corporation that a whole co is on the top and the investment company is at the bottom. The whole co owns the investment company. I have some slides I can show you, or you can create a management company. So this way, you take the money out of that investment company, and you either pass it up to a whole call, or you create a management company on the side, uh -huh. and you can you want to share pass it? your net. You want to yes, share? sure. Oh, oh let, me, yes, uh, sure. let me make you a host. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Good. So when you have a two-tier corporation, you are sitting on the top. Mm -hmm. You create two corporations. One becomes the rental income company that owns the property, for example. Yes. And the other one becomes a management company. Mm -hmm. The management company is considered to earn active business income. It's an active business, and therefore it pays 12.5% tax. So uh -huh. when you have money earning inside a rental company, an investment company, a property company, whatever you want to call it, that income is passive. You're not working yes. for it. Yes, yes. So that one is taxed at 50 and a half percent. Uh -huh. So the trick is that when you have a net income inside that rental property company, you pass the net income to the management company as management fees. Oh, okay. So for example, if rental company has uh, 10 or $20,000 of net income after all expenses and interest and everything, mm -hmm. you pass that net income as management fees to the management company. Therefore oh. your net income becomes zero. Oh, okay. And you don't pay tax in there. The management company is an active business. It is managing your rental company. It's managing your other businesses. It's managing ah. all the buildings. Yes. Even though you can have a property manager, yeah. even if you can have 12, 12 different buildings and each of them in different cities, and each of them has a different property manager, mm -hmm. but somebody needs to manage all those property managers. Mm -hmm. So you're allowed to have a management company. This management company manages your properties and your property manager. So you pay fees to that management company. Therefore, you take all the money out of the rental income you pass it to the management company. Rental income has no left, rental company has no money left. It doesn't pay tax. No, all the money is in the management company and the management company pays 12 and a half percent tax on it. This is one way of doing it. This is really so, good. <laughs> thank you. So. Oh, nice. Okay, so the other way of doing it is that you're sitting on the top. Mm -hmm. In the former slide that I showed you, you have to create two corporations and you own the shares of both corporations. Mm -hmm. But here you create a holding company mm -hmm. and you own 100% of the shares of the holding company and the holding company owns that rental company. 
So again, rental company has net income of let's say 20 or 30,000. Mm -hmm. Now, rental company, because there is no management company to pay off the net income, there is a holding company on the top that owns the shares of the rental company. What do you do? You pass up the net income as dividends to the holding company. Okay. So when you pass up the net income to the holding company as dividends, mm -hmm. then the rental company gets something called dividend tax refund. And that goes against the taxes you got to pay. Mm -hmm. So it brings the rental income company's taxes to 12.5%. So instead of paying 50 and a half percent, you get 40% tax uh, dividend refund. So then your taxes are gone down to 12, to 12 and a half percent. And the whole call on the dividend that it receives, it doesn't pay up taxes because dividends from one small Canadian controlled private corporation to another, they are tax free because the taxes are paid in the rental company. So once the rental company pays the taxes, so let's say you have $100,000 of income, $80,000 in expenses, you're left with $20,000. Mm -hmm. You pay the taxes on that $20,000, percent but that's an after-tax money. The dividend that you pay off is an after-tax money. When you pay up the dividends... That money, that dividends taxes has, has already been paid and there is no double taxation in Canada. And that's why the whole code doesn't have to pay tax on that dividend. You're just passing up the net income, the cashes that are left in the company. So it's like moving the money from one pocket to the other. And this way you don't pay taxes. So you reduce the rental income company's taxes from 50 and a half percent to two of and a half percent. Wow. So what will you help you to choose this one or the, or the other? One? Okay, so the question is, what are your long-term goals? Mm -hmm. Right now, I have a client who started a business mm -hmm. and he bought a couple of properties. He bought four properties, one after another, every two or three years, one after another. Mm -hmm. And he bought all of them in his personal name. Mm -hmm. So now he has, under him, you have a business company, an actual workshop, mm -hmm. and then individually he owns four properties. Mm -hmm. He is somebody that says, I want to own 100 buildings and I want to stop working when I'm 50. Mm -hmm. So when somebody like that is thinking long-term about owning lots of properties, mm -hmm. you better have a double structure like this one. Because under this whole code, you can have a dozen or 20 more corporations. Oh. And each of them start paying off the net income as dividend to the whole code, and whole code holds your money for you. So this way, all the rental companies, they pay 12.5%. All the money stays up in the whole code until you take the money out personally. Mm. On the other hand, the other one that I showed you in this picture, uh -huh. here, there is no hold co on the top. Yes. So then that rental income has to come out as either property management to the management company or has to go up to you as dividends. So this is more for somebody that wants to own two or three or four buildings. Oh, okay. And they take the money out to the management company. They put their own car in the management company. They also, besides the property managers, they visit the rental properties. You have more expenses in the management company. This is a different structure. Oh, okay. This is perfectly fine. I have clients that are owning properties 20 or 30 years, but they each own one or two buildings and each building has 10, 12, no, they started with one door, one building. Now they each have 10, 12 doors. So they each own two or three buildings. But they take all the net income out of the rental company to the management company. And they pass it up to dividend to themselves. And if anything remains in the management company, management company pays only to about half percent. This structure, the other one that I showed you, this one 
has, has a long-term view that you can put 10 other corporations down there, 20 other corporations you can put down there. Uh, looking at some of the largest uh, investor holders in the world, somebody like Trump or Robert Kiyosaki, that's the structure they have. They have a whole co on the top. They have some, I, I heard one time that uh, Trump owned 400 rental properties down at the bottom. Oh. But all of those corporations, they pass up the profit to the whole co and there is nothing left at the bottom in the rental company. Wow. So this is, and you can still anytime you want, you can turn this into what we call a three-tier corporation and you can do this. When oh. you see your rental company, you have two or three rental companies. Okay. Now you don't want to pass everything off to the hold call. You can pass some of the income to the management company. You can buy a car under the management company. You can put some of your advertising under the management company. In the rental company or the whole code, you can't have uh, gift cards given to, for example, it's against the CRA rules. They don't like you to give uh, gift cards to property managers. They don't like to give you gift cards in the rental company or the whole code to the accountant or to the lawyer. Yeah. Or to the mailman. You can't even give a chocolate box in the rental company. You can't even give Christmas card to your tenants really? in the rental company. They don't like it. It's just a rental company. Yeah. But when you have a management company, mm -hmm. that management company can give gift oh. cards to the tenants, can give gift cards to the accountants and lawyers and uh, whoever oh, is your supplier. Perfect. In the rental company and hold co, you cannot own a car. You can own a, rent and own a car inside a rental company, but as long as it has more than one building, it needs two buildings in there. Oh, okay. So... But then as long as you have just one, comp one building inside the rental company, the management company can buy a car or can lease the car. So you can put your own personal car inside the management company and expense the expenses and lower the, manage and lower the net income for the management company and pay lower taxes. Wow. So that's how you so structure it. What I suggest to my clients is usually depending on what your views and your passion regarding investment is, start with a whole co and a rental company, you can always create the management company. You can, if you create a rental company and a management company, then creating a whole co is kind of tough afterwards because you got to sell now the shares of the rental company to the whole co. So you're better off creating, if you are thinking long-term owning properties and forever being in a, real estate investment business, you're better off creating a whole co and a rental company and you can always create the management company later on. But at least you have the proper structure and you pay less taxes. Wow. And what's the difference between these three tiers uh, in terms of uh, when you do taxes, which one is more expensive? Okay, so tax-wise, at the end, you end up paying 12.5% tax. Or all three. All three. But the problem is that when you have a two-tier corporation, you pay tax, you do income taxes, you pay your accountants for two corporations. But when you have a three-tier corporation, now you pay your accountant and your lawyer for three corporations. So oh. the ongoing fees, yeah, because each corporation is a separate entity. Yes. Now you got to do balance sheet and income statement for each corporation. Oh. But the advantage is the tax savings, advantage is the protection, advantage is that when you go to the bank, now you don't have to prepare income statement for 10 different buildings and a business. Now you just give them the holding company's financial okay. statements and tax return as proof of income. All the other 10 other companies that you own under there as business, as rental income, you don't have to provide it to the bank. And the other advantage is now they look at you when you have a hold co and a rental company. Now they look at you as a business. They analyze you as a business. Yes. They don't analyze you as an individual. Is there the minimum income you're supposed to have to be able to do this? So minimum, no. Okay, you see, so as what? As a business or as a rental company? As a as rental. As a rental. As a rental. So 
No, because depends on the protection you want to have. But if you have one building and it makes in, making you two or three or four or five hundred dollars a door, and at the end of the year it's a ten or twenty grand net income. Mm -hmm. So for that, uh, you you put that and you take out the money and you use it yourself. So that twenty isn't worth you creating a corporation for it. Yeah. Because you're paying personal taxes on it, personal taxes on mm -hmm. 20 grand, depending if you're on the first tax bracket, it's either 20% or 30% or 36%. So it depends. Mm -hmm. But once you grow and you, I have clients, so for example, I have a client that, few clients right now that are each in highest tax bracket. They are salespeople, they are real estate agents, uh, they are doctors, and they each make over two hundred. They make three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. So for that person, when they buy the first building, if they buy it in their own name immediately, that property, even if it's ten grand a year net income, that ten grand is taxed at fifty percent. Yeah. So if they create a corporation and they do a two tier and they pass up the dividend, that 10K as dividend from a rental company to a holding company, that 10K pays only $1,200 in taxes. Let's say you pay uh, 1,500 and then another 1,000 or 600, let's say 2,000 to 2,500 for the two corporations to be accounted. Mm -hmm. So 2,500 maximum plus 1,200 is 3,700. But then before you were paying 10 grand in taxes. Yeah. So then it all depends what situation you are in. Yeah. So if you're a high earner over 200,000 or even 150,000 and up, mm -hmm. yes, you better consider because everything is taxed at highest tax bracket. You should consider it seriously. But if you're somebody who is in the lower tax bracket or you think the building is not going to make money for the first two or three years, it's a money losing operation until you renew the mortgage and you get a new a better rate then that's when you consider incorporating so it all depends each case it has to be uh, analyzed on case by case your net income has to come into the picture your uh, what are you going to do with the company's net income are you going to take it out or are you going to leave it in the corporation these are the factors we got to consider, oh. yes. So what would you suggest for somebody who wants to buy his first or her first rental income, first one? I would suggest where are you located personally on the income wise? If you oh. are somebody making less than 100, and how much is the income of the property? If it's a condo that is going to give you $100 rent, no, I wouldn't consider it. Okay. But if it's a, you know... Uh, multiplex and it's uh, four doors and they each of them give you three four hundred dollars five hundred dollars that's two thousand dollars a month twenty four thousand dollars then you got to consider cooperation because no if you are making 100k and then you are making twenty twenty five thousand dollars in a corporation sorry in a rental income do you want to pay 36 percent tax on it or do you want to put it in a corporation pay 12 percent but then pay the accountant so it all comes into where you are located personally, how much income you make, how much income the rental property makes, and then what are you going to do with the net income? Are you going to leave it in the business or are you going to take it out? Oh. That's how, what you've got to consider. So it has to be analyzed on case by case. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, what are the most uh, common mistakes uh, people do in uh, incorporate? So let me stop sharing now with you. Uh, mistakes. Uh, there are a few mistakes that people make. Again, the design, they don't analyze their situation uh, and they just buy a building. And unfortunately, yeah, they start paying high taxes. And just like the clients that I have, and now we have to scramble and create a corporation, move it to a corporation, pay land transfer taxes and things. Because now if you move a property to a land transfer tax after you own it, the ownership is changing. So you got to pay land transfer tax. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful with this thing. Uh, your mortgage then, your insurance changes. You got to be careful with this. Thing. That's one thing. 
Uh, the other mistake people make, the biggest mistake they make, and I shouldn't be saying this, this is Canada, people pay expenses cash. Uh -huh. When they pay cash, they don't get a receipt for it. But as a business and as a rental owner, rental property owner, you should never pay cash because you can expense it. As a business, you put it as an expense on your business expenses. And as a rental property owner, you put it against the properties, either maintenance and uh, something. It's what something you pay for the building. So why pay the expenses cash and not get a receipt? So that is the biggest mistake. I have a lot of clients sitting across the table. Oh yeah, I paid $5,000 to that guy to repair the windows or to repair the roof or to repair the driveway. So do you have a receipt? No, he didn't give me a receipt, it was cash. But you're a business or you're in rental property, you can deduct that, or you can capitalize it and depreciate it, depending on what kind of expense it was. So why not? Well, he said, I don't have to pay HST. Why does it matter? If you're a business, you're registered for HST, you deduct it. And if you're a rental property owner, you add it to your other expenses, the HST. Now you have lost $5,000 of expense because you didn't want to pay 13% HST on it then they have to pay tax on that 5,000. And if they own the building personally, that's 30%, 35%, 40% tax on it. That means when you pay an expense cash, you're paying the other, the contractor's income taxes out of your own pocket. You shouldn't do that. That is one of the biggest mistakes that I see. Oh, so that means that Every expenses we have to have a receipt. Have a receipt for your accountant? No, accountant doesn't care. As long as you give me a list, I do the tax return. But if two, three, four years on the road, CRA comes and looks at it, you need to have a receipt. The other mistake I see clients make is that they are not organized. Uh, they pay one receipt from personal bank account. They pay the other one from the business or the rental property. They pay the other one from personal credit card, they pay the other one from the wife or husband's credit card. And when they come to me and they sit down across the desk and they say, oh yeah, there was two or $3,000 my wife paid for it. I don't know how much it is. So how much do I put? It, it was around 3,000, I'm not sure. But around 3,000 or around 2,000? No, you need to know what it is. You need to be organized because now you've got to pay taxes on it. So you need to be, get organized. I know people don't like paperwork. I know people don't like taxes. And that's why accountants are there. But get a folder, get uh, some sort of a pouch, get something. And at the end of the day, when you go home, put all your expenses in that folder. So at the end of the year, you know where all the receipts are, whether you paid for it or the wife paid for it or the credit card paid for it or the business or rental company paid for it. But at least they are all there. You might have a hard time reconciling the bank account, where did all these expenses come from, but the cash is in the company, but we have so much expense, we don't know what to do with. Yeah, because they paid it personally. But it's better to be organized, and at the end of the year, sitting and saying, oh my God, why is my net income so much? And I think I have a loss, because they don't have receipts. They, they don't keep it, or they just throw it in at the desk and... Uh, it gets uh, shuffled between the papers or it remains in the pl same plastic bag that they bought the item or in the box that they bought it. And at the end of the year, because they are disorganized, they don't have all the receipts and everybody is scrambling to find the expense. So you got to be organized because it's your own money on the line. Your voice, your voice. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> uh, so when you have like a two tier or three tier, do you have to have the same amount of a bank account or just one bank account? No, 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 no. When you have two to three different corporations, you gotta have a different bank account for each corporation. When you create a corporation, a person, a legal person is born. The moment the corporation gets created in the eye of the government and the courts, and the financial institution, a new person is born, except this person is on the paper. Mm -hmm. This corporation, this person can own assets, can have liabilities, it can sue people and it can be sued. Yes. So 
that's what example that I tell all my clients with no exception, no matter how close you are with your husband, with your wife, your brother, your sister, uh, your mom, your dad, no matter how close you are, you don't go to their wallet, take $50 out and leave. There has to be a record. You put a note, mom, I took 50, wife, I took $100. Because there is a record, there has to be a record. So exact same thing with corporations, there has to be a record. So for each corporation, yes, you do need a separate uh, bank account. Oh, okay. Because you need to separate, do financial statements separately for each corporation. Do the income tax for each corporation separately. Wow. Okay, guys, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Any questions? I know you all have questions. It's impossible. Tax is not that... Uh, exciting and interesting and <laughs> it's complicated seven o'clock at night come on i know you have questions <laughs> hi everybody hi hi this is jean luc hi jean luc how are you today i'm good how are you good thank you hi funny hi 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 Jean-Luc. Hi, <laughs> yeah. uh, i was uh wondering uh, if you can tell us about something tax free what in my tax free? Yeah, like you mean uh, tax free savings account or what? Uh, like uh, on the salary, something like that. Tax free, mm, tax free income. Yeah, tax free. No, income. unfortunately, every income you earn in this country in the United States is taxable. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what I'm going through right now. Everybody was receiving, a lot of people were receiving SERB and then CRB. And they were thinking it's uh, free money. They are receiving uh, T4As and they are calling the office. Why is the government issuing me 10 or 12 grand or 6 grand uh, T4A for uh, SERP? Because it was, it was government's money, yes, and it was a grant, yes. But unfortunately, it's not tax-free. Even the grants we get are not tax-free. The government is not right, not giving so much grant to, to small businesses that are closed, shut down, locked down and they need to reopen or they have expenses. They haven't reopened a lot of business. They have so many that are gyms and uh, yoga studios that they haven't opened yet or the Toronto restaurants haven't opened yet. So there's a lot of grant up there, but unfortunately none of it is tax-free. The only thing that is tax-free in this country is uh, one is life insurance payments because it's with, you buy the life insurance with your after-tax money. Mm -hmm. So the benefit you receive from the life insurance is tax-free. The other tax-free item that we have temporarily until the government starts taxing it is the, say, the gain on the sale of the principal residence. For the last three years, CRA is asking, did you sell your personal property, your personal residence? How much did you sell it for? How much did you buy it for? Before three years ago, they were not asking, but why are they asking for three years now? They, want, they are calculating in the background how much profit people are making on their personal residence. Is it gonna be taxable like United States? Everybody says sooner or later, yes. But right now, sale of principal residence is tax-free. The other item that is kind of tax-free is capital gain. So when you buy a building, let's say you buy it at 100, well, not 100, you can find anything in front of 100, you buy it for a million dollars and you sell it for a million and a half, two and a half years, three years later. If it's not a flipping, it's not a business because government of Canada looks at a flip as a business. So if you hold on to it for two years and you sell it for a profit, that profit, half of it is not taxed, it's tax free. So it's the capital gains on the principal resident, the capital, sorry, the life insurance, and half of gains on stocks and uh, other investment properties are not taxed. That's the only thing. So every other income you have to pay? Any other income you have to pay. Right now, all the grants people are getting, or even the uh, small businesses, they are all getting uh, $60,000 of a loan that they don't need to pay by December 31st, 2022. Two years from now, next year, December, they got to start paying it back and out of the 40,000, 10,000, if they pay it all back by December 2022, 10,000 is tax-free and out of 20,000, 
can be tax free. But even those 20 grams are not tax free. If you pay the 20 grand by December 2022 and you get a break of 10 grand, that break you get from the government not to pay it back, that becomes taxable income to you. So there are very few items in this country that are tax free. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And and you see when you get a salary, they give you a salary after we took the tax, right? Of course, the first thing then, is that yeah. Uncle Sam has to collect their money first before you get it. And when you go buy anything, you have to pay tax. Sales tax on it. Yes. You pay tax twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So income and then whatever you buy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So very few items here are tax free. Yeah, that's why Kiyosaki say taxes are the, uh, the biggest expenses. Exactly. But they don't teach us at school. Yes. So Dre is asking, can I deduct mortgage payments on a rental property? The mortgage itself, the capital, no. Because you borrowed money from somebody and you're paying back that. So that mortgage goes against the capital. It's only the interest on the mortgage that you can deduct not the mortgage capital itself, so portionally. But the rent, the rent you get mm -hmm. is tax-free, right? Rent? Yeah. What is the rent? Good question. Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, for passive income, so rental income, so the cash flow that you get after paying, um, the, the money that comes to you, what is the rate? of tax that you get charged from the government okay. is it the same as your personal so, income I mean, or would it be if different you own it personally yes it's the same rate you pay tax but you deduct all your expenses and you add the net income to your other incomes yes if you own okay. it personally but if you own it to, uh, to a corporation depends if it's a two-tier or single corporation and if you take dividend out of it or not so it can be 12 and a half or 50 and a half so when you say expense, though, like, so, for example, if let's say you have a property that um, with after so with the rent and property taxes and um, what is the insurance, let's say it's eight hundred dollars and then you have one hundred dollars is coming to you when you're doing your taxes. Are you reporting the total eight hundred or the one hundred that comes to you? Is it is the positive cash flow or is it the whole Not thing? the cash flow? It's the net income because all of the cash flow, you're deducting the mortgage payments. Okay. So you put the rental income, yeah, minus the in, sorry, minus the interest on the mortgage, minus the property taxes, minus the insurance, minus all the repair and maintenance. If you're paying your utilities for the tenant, mm -hmm. like telephone, and they are living in the basement, and you're paying for the hydro, so all those expenses get deducted. And okay. at the end, let's say you have hundred dollars net income. Mm -hmm. Multiply by twelve months, that twelve hundred gets added to your personal income. Okay, so it's the net after all the expenses. Okay. Oh, I need to get an accountant. <laughs> I'd be glad to help. <laughs> That's why that is here. <laughs> I'd be glad to help. This is not my forte. <laughs> I put my uh, contact information later at NHT. Oh, no, I, I got you. I got your information. Oh, the, from uh, the last time you were talking at, um, uh, what's, it's funny, what's the guy's name that you guys Kursaki? are talking Sunil. to? Sunil. Sunil. No, not Korsaki. Sunil. Sunil. The other one. Huh? Yeah, Sunil. Oh, so maybe, yes. In the last the last talk you guys had, I, um, you're on it, so I got your information from there. Yes. Don't yes. worry, I'm I'm keeping. Once I have like four or five properties, and then I'll come to you. <laughs> sure, even the first one you have it, I'll be glad to help. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you then see how it comes back after you, and then charge you thirty five to fifty percent penalty and interest for a mistake. Yes, I hate I hate CRA. Let's just be honest. Nobody likes them. <laughs> Nobody likes them. <laughs> No, we have yeah, to nasty. treat them because that's why we have good, uh, nice roads. We, we we safe. Come on, our taxes are doing good. Safety, taxi, like safety that we have, security we have in this country. Yes, yeah. if and we didn't roads, pay, we wouldn't have all those. Uh, yes, luxuries. Yes, that's yeah, the absolutely. road, the highway. Exactly. In the states, we have to pay for highway. Most mm -hmm. of the highway, you have to pay. They are privately owned. Yes, you gotta yeah. pay both. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So we we lucky here. We can get 
<laughs> who's who's listening? Okay, fine. We like them. <laughs> 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 That's, That's where I want to go with my <laughs> friend. We're, for, we're all friends. We like them. <laughs> Indirectly, we know. The bottom, in the heart of hearts, we know. If it wasn't for them having these monies, they would all go corrupt like my country back home. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I, th I think the main thing is educating ourselves, understanding how, yeah. like, there's ways to go around it. There's way people have been, have yeah. been doing it. If it wasn't working, it, they would not be doing it anymore. Exactly. So I think exactly. it's just a matter of educating ourselves and understanding exactly. it, and then we just uh, figure it out that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jali has to go because he has to work. He just left. Okay. Yeah, but I was going to ask you, when... When you have, you take a, a, you, you refinance your property and you take mm -hmm. your equity out, that amount is not taxable, right? No, no, no. Okay. No, so that equity is not taxable. No, because that's a loan. You get a loan. You don't take it as a cash. It's a loan. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's a loan. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, you only pay tax when you sell it. Oh, that's okay. when you realize you haven't realized the gain. It's just an equity. It's a loan. You gotta pay it back to the bank that you got it from. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Your tenant with. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's really that's really good. That's the advantage of uh, owning um, rental. I can give you an example. I took equity in my my uh, my income property. I pay off my car loan. I pay off all my my debt. And I, I had a really chunk of money. I to buy another building. <laughs> exactly. No, I eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The <laughs> idea is you get the equity out to buy another property, so you, somebody else pays the rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but even even if I took that loan, somebody is paying it for. For me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's my advantage. That's why yeah. I want you, all of you guys, own at least one income property. Exactly. Yeah, because with a salary, I wasn't able to pay off my car. Just Never. Before. On a salary, impossible. 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 Unless you're making two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a salary, it's impossible. Even my boss doesn't make that money. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I, I, I'll be making more if they were just giving my gross pay, not net pay. You know, <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> then we go back again to what Fanny said. Who's going to be right. the, the cops and for the. <laughs> <laughs> Give my gross pay, don't take my. <laughs> we have to pay taxes. <laughs> this is the price we pay for freedom. That's what the uh, Kiyosaki said. Oh, okay. So Isabel wants to know if she buy a um, cottage. Just one, just one. Do you think she should incorporate? Cottage, what do you want to do? You want to have it as a business or do you want to have it personal? If you want to rent it out, uh -huh. then it's just, especially I have a client who bought a church in Eastern Ontario and it's just one rental property and he put it in Airbnb and he incorporated. We are just going through the uh, incorporation. He bought it personally. Now we are putting it under the corporation. So it all depends on what you want to do. If you want to have the cottage yourself, so you go there every weekend, no, no, there is no point in doing that. Yeah, that's but right. if you want to have it rented out, even temporarily on, you know, not every necessarily every week, full time as Airbnb, then definitely, yeah, it depends. But it depends on the income, right? The income and what you want to do. If there is no income, there is no, exactly. But if you are having an income out of it, yes, of course, you should consider it. Mm -hmm. And if you're planning to buy more income property? Definitely, you should consider. Where are you going long term? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the first year he bought the church, he mm -hmm. didn't have any income because uh, there were a lot of expenses and a lot of maintenance and repair. And it wasn't necessarily every week we can rent it out because... He had to bring in repair people or painter or somebody to do it, to fix it. But last year, he had an enormous amount of net income. Even though considering not the whole year, it wasn't rented out because of the lockdown, it's an enormous amount of net income. So then you got to consider it. Yes, so it has to be analyzed on case by case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isabel say, yeah, um, it, it's for... Uh 
yeah, she wants to rent it out because she wants to make it. So we can analyze, she should analyze it, how much is her net income from that place. Yeah. And if it is positive, definitely you should consider it. But uh, uh, owning it as uh, Airbnb, yeah, definitely you should consider it because now you have protection. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you were listening the last two days, uh, in downtown Toronto, somebody is uh, throwing bottles. They had a party and uh, the kids got drunk and they were throwing the beer bottles off the roof of the uh, 35th floor. Really? So, yeah, they and the police, well, they threw the kids out and uh, they went after the owner and he had rented out temporarily for the weekend to the kids. No. So then he is personally liable for renting it to the responsible people because they were throwing... They, the owner is responsible. Really? So now they are going, yes, they are charging the, the landlord for renting it to these people that these people were throwing uh, bottles when they got drunk at the, in the middle of the night, throwing the bottles on the street. So wow. that is the protection that comes with the corporation. So if you're thinking of renting short term, definitely you should consider short term and students, definitely. So, I have clients in Kitchener, Waterloo. They don't even rent to the first year students. They don't rent to? First year university students. Oh, yeah. No first year university students. It's the first year they come out of the house. They are free. They think they can do anything they want. So nobody I know in on none of my clients in Kitchener, Waterloo, none of them rents to first year university students. Oh, wow. Yeah. So these are the things you got to consider. Yeah. Yeah. And if you already have income property, but they are under your name. Yes. What will you suggest? So, depends. Uh, exactly with this church. Uh, he owned it personally because nobody told him he has to pay tax, how much taxes are going to be. His accountant didn't tell him at that time. So when he came to me and we met at the December event and we started analyzing the taxes and I saw, oh my God, he has so much taxes to pay. So you have an option that you can transfer it to a corporation, but you got to pay the land transfer tax. And depends on where that building is located. So this one is in Eastern uh, Canada, a million, a million dollar property. He only has to pay $6,250 in land transfer tax, which is far more, less, far cheaper than paying in personal tax on it for the next 10, 15 years. But if you own a million dollar or two million dollar building in Toronto and you got to pay land transfer tax, it's enormous. So that again, you have to analyze it. And then if you don't have a corporation, unfortunately, uh, because if you do have a corporation in existence mm -hmm. and you buy a building in your name, you can always buy it with the name of a corporation to be named later. Oh, really? And you can transfer it. Yes, you can do it according to CRA rules. You can do a land, uh, so you can do a rollover, Section 85 rollover, and transfer it. But oh. if you don't own the corporation in the beginning, okay. and you create it a few years after buying the building, CRA doesn't accept it. But if you buy the building now, and a month later or two months later, you create the corporation, yeah, you can transfer it to the corporation at that time. Mm -hmm. But if you do it a few years later, they don't accept it. So the corporation has to be in existence around the time you buy the building. Yeah. yeah. Can you explain again uh, the, uh, the protection? Like if somebody sues you? If yes. So if other. you own a property and somebody sues you, you're personally liable. Wow. So here in uh, Ontario, if you don't clean your sidewalk, uh -huh. I came from Quebec, and people are not responsible to clean the sidewalk. But oh, really? In Ontario, yes. But here in Ontario, somebody falls down in front of your home, home on your sidewalk, it's, you are responsible to clean that, and you're responsible to salt it. So you own a property, you're responsible for the sidewalk. So if somebody falls down, then you're responsible, your own uh, personal uh, property, your own investments, your car, everything is at risk. They can sue you for everything you have. But when it's in the corporation, only the building and the cash you have in the corporation is at risk. So that is unfortunately the disadvantage, the bigger disadvantage that God forbid, that if you buy something personally, you're personally liable for it. 
So we can even take the house you're living in. Yeah, that's risky, yes. Wow. But you got to get insurance. You got to get enough insurance. A million, two million, five million insurance. You got to get that, yes. Wow. Isabel, I hope we answer your question. And uh, your question, does it Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dre, what are the tax implications of changing your primary residence? When? Okay, so until the moment a building is a primary resident, principal resident, there is no tax on the growth. Mm -hmm. But the moment it becomes a rental property, you got to consider the value at that time, how much it is. So when you sell it 10 years later, after it became a rental property, then you got to consider the time of sale value minus the time it became a rental property. So all the gains you have from the principal residence are not taxed. It's when the change in use happens is that what you've got to consider. Okay, so if I wanted to set up the basic corporation, not none of that uh, very uh, high tech yet, <laughs> yes. how much usually does it cost to do so, that? Um, depends if you are going in with some other other person and you need a shareholder agreement or not. But creating a corporation and then if you're alone, unfortunately, because then the, when you they are transferring the lawyers transferring the building to you, they need to see a minute book and the minute book itself costs around $500. Minute book is a thick book that shows uh, the charter of the corporation, the bylaws of the corporation, it shows who are the directors, who are the officers, who are the shareholders. Every detail of the corporation goes into that minute book. And when you buy a property, the lawyers need that to complete it and they want to see all the details, who is who in that corporation. So that alone is 500. So depending okay. if you go to a lawyer or to an accountant, somewhere between fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred, they will cost you to create the corporation. Okay. And Nata, you wrote a book, right? You wrote a book. About uh, I wrote a chapter with uh, yeah with Brian Tracy, oh, but I am also working on uh, a book on my own, and I have a couple two more chapters to complete, and it is called. Uh, uh, 50 Secrets uh, CRA Doesn't Want You To Know. And that's based on my experience of 30 years sitting across the table from small businesses and uh, real estate investors. Yes, so two more chapters and I'm done. Perfect, perfect. And uh, my last question is, uh, what does financial freedom mean? Uh, I learned the meaning of finance, to be honest. I didn't know that even though I became an accountant, I was working as an accountant for so many years in a large corporation. Not until I listened to an interview with uh, Robert Kiyosaki, I never realized what actual financial freedom is, what he defines sat in my heart and it has always been with me. So to me, financial freedom is the amount, the, the, the income that you need to earn to keep your lifestyle without actually working. So if you have cash in the bank, how many days, how many months can that cash carry you over? If you don't own cash in the bank, how many buildings do you need to own that you need, don't need to work? So that is the meaning of financial freedom. The moment that I can keep my lifestyle for the rest of my life without actually working or worrying about working or earning income or paying tax. Uh, I, I didn't know about the. Uh, I didn't even know I had the option. I like you. I did management, management, yeah. city. But yeah. even that, I didn't even know the difference between asset and liability. Exactly, <laughs> the way he defines it is quite different. Yes, so easy, so easy to understand. Exactly. At school, it was something boring and uh, complicated. You didn't understand. Exactly. But to make you so easy. Sure. So easy. Yeah. And I really liked it and that he, he teach in a way that everybody can understand. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. So does anybody else has any question? No, that was good. It's 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 things they don't teach you in school. Yeah. 
they were supposed to at least to no they don't because then you know <laughs> then you'll be then you'll be not. among the two smart. percent <laughs> Yeah, because if we knew, if we knew, we could save up. Like, like I own this property for four years. So for the last four years, I was paying, I was paying taxes on half of my income. Yep. Because they are under my name. They ra- they rather tell you about our fees and 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 lears and all that stuff, but you will never make enough to actually retire and have yeah, enough yeah. money to retire on. So, but that's what they usually will tell you, and what the company tell you. Nobody tells you any of the other stuff. No, no, no. Well, sometimes they also don't know because, like, no. when, when you don't you don't educate yourself. Like right now, sometimes I speak with the financial advisors, and honestly, you listen to them, you're like, ah, oh, okay, you don't know. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, oh, you know, like no. I know so many real estate agents that themselves they don't own one single property. They, they own nothing, or brokers, they just, and they exactly. own nothing. You just they like, just look oh, at it as a job. That's it, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. but do you know that uh, uh, I think most of a realtor don't make even thirty thousand a year? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They don't make any money because it's just commission. It's just commission. Exactly. Yeah. Like in Toronto, we have like more than twenty five thousand realtor. Wow. Or 30,000, something? No, yeah. I know. I have so many real estate and mortgage workers. I don't know. Some of them don't make 70, 80K. They've been in business for 20 years. And then oh. I have clients that are uh, 10 years, not even 10 years. He's in business and he's making half a million. It all depends what you do. And then the guy that owns half a million makes a half a million, 400, 500 a year. He also owns the two large industrial buildings already because he saved and he saved and he bought uh, large buildings. Income, pay more taxes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So Dre has a question, Warren Linda. Okay. Uh, so you see, they would like you to invest the money in uh, uh, businesses that create jobs. Yeah. So if you create it in a rental income as a corporation, not as personally, because personally you pay just as a personal taxes. It doesn't matter in what bracket you are in. But they penalize you in a corporation. But don't forget, at the same time, they give you tools to get away with. Yeah. They allow you to have a holding corporation and pass up dividends and bring your taxes down to 12 and a half. They allow you to create a management company on the side so you pass the net income to the management company. So they allow you at the same time, but then you got to go through the loopholes and create that two or three or three tier corporations to pay less tax. Eli, what are you doing? Nina, Nina, can you mute yourself? Okay. Sorry. So they still allow you to keep the capital and pay the 12 and a half percent tax, but then yes, you got to go around and create that structure. Because they would rather do, rather see you create jobs, jobs yeah. and allow people to have jobs and go to work and pay personal tax rates. But in the state, do they give a break also because you, you're providing a housing? Yeah, that's why they let you have that uh, hold call yeah. and have the management company. So they bring your 50.5% tax to 12.5%. They allow you, unless you don't do that, and that's when you got to pay the taxes. Okay. But in Canada, you cannot just have a break just because you're providing houses. No, no. 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 You have to yes. create jobs. Create, yes. Take the money out and then start loaning it from the other corporation to the new investment. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, so thank you so much. You're welcome. Adam. Thank you. It was great to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, and everybody, you have uh, his uh, email address if you yes. have any question. Yeah, about especially about taxes. How can you save on taxes? Because yeah, <laughs> you have to save on taxes. Exactly. If you need, especially in these days and time, you need to save taxes to grow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks Thank for the invite. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Thank you, Thank so you much very everybody. much. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice evening and see you on Saturdays. See you on Saturdays. Saturday, me and uh, Nader will be there. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice we will be listening and watching. Thank you. Thank you.